Hello, dear friends. Welcome to my channel. Today's discussion is quantum mechanics. Why do we need linear algebra in quantum mechanics? Like the wave functions, quantum quantum superpositions on tunneling, you already know. Okay, you have already know that wave functions, quantum tunnel superposition of or on tunneling. The mathematics behind quantum mechanics can be made intuitive and understanding. Now, before we begin, we need to go over the math. Okay, I will assume you are already familiar with it. First, I will assume you have a working knowledge of single variable calculus. In other words, okay. So, mathematical prerequisite, prerequisites, mathematical prerequisites, single variable calculus. You are comfortable with derivatives, integral, and Taylor series. You don't have to how to calculate this. Just have an understanding of what they are and what they mean the linear algebra concepts you should be familiar with are shown on the screen now one is vectors second is dot products third is linear combinations linear transformation matrices inverse transformations basis Eigen vectors and eigen values. I want to show you all why we want to use linear algebra to model the quantum world. We are going to think like theoretical physics and find that linear algebra pops out majorly by considering physical observations. This is my physical observations. Okay. Classical physics. Physics. First, let's review the basic mathematical model. We have for classical physics, we know that a classical particles carries with its physical quantities like posi position, momentum, and energy. So, in classical physics, you see that. If this is the moment position this is momentum and this is energy okay as this particle moves in space and in interacts with objects so what are the take aways first we know that classical physics quantities are single value okay classical physics quantities are single value okay meaning that meaning they only take on one value at any one time so for example a particle cannot be in two places at once and it cannot have two different velocities second second is continuous second physical quantities are continuous meaning they are very smoothly as they evolve in time and they don't change values suddenly. Given these two observations, it hopefully seems clear that the way to model these physical quantities is with a quant continuous function, a function by definition. Definition only takes on one value at any single time and a continuous function does not have any sudden jump okay sudden jump so this is why classical physics we represent physical continue quantities with continuous function now this may seem kind of obvious i mean what else would we use well to see when a model like this one breaks down, let us analyze a real physical system and compare the classical. 
and quantum words. So classical versus quantum. In particular, let's focus on a hydrogen atom. Okay, considering consisting of an electron in motion. Okay, this is the hydrogen atom, atom and consisting consisting of an electron in motion around a proton. Let's see. We expect to happen within the classical field frame work as the electron orbits and falls towards the proton it will release energy energy the form of light form of light okay so falls towards the proton it will release energy energy the form of light this is well known fact from electricity and magnetism magnetism by measuring the energy of light released we can have a measure of how much energy the electron has left here in, in units of electron electron is volts we can set up a detector okay you see a detector i set up a detector and do exactly this the electrons energy energy is shown on the left and as required in classical physics it is single valued and continuous in units of electron volts okay so now let's hope into the quantum world get an actual hydrogen atom and detector let's see really happened so quantum physics We would find that we only get a few blips from from our detector, measuring only a few energies. Okay, let's reset the experiment again and give it another run. We only measure a few energies again, but this time some of them are different. We can repeat this experiment over and over again, again, and we would notice that the following. First, it seems that we only get a certain set of energy values, never measuring anything in between. Second, the specific energy value that we measure in random. However, it, it does seem like some energy values have a higher probability than others. Let's summarize the, this conclusion and their implication. First, our experiment showed that the physical quantities can sometimes be discrete meaning we can list all the discrete random and but probabilities probabilistic a continuous function won't work okay okay some values are more likely than others so there is a probability attached to each value note that this also contradicts the single value characteristics since before the measurement we cannot determine a singular value for the quantity it could be only of uh, it could be any of them so clearly a continuous function won't work to model the quantum world 
so quantum world so what we first let's find a way to mathematical model to randomness problem it seems like before we make a measurement the particle somehow holds the information on every possible outcome we could get how do we mathematically represent this phenomenon phenomenon well let's see that we know for sure that the particle has energy a and let us say that the particle is represented by the mathematical object m a okay and could be anything it could be a function an element of a ring a manifold just some mathematical object that this is a manifold okay manifold a manifold just some mathematical object that we have yet to determine now if the particle has energy b then it is represented by mathematical object mb okay and so on and so forth mb so a manifold just some mathematical object that we have yet to determine now if the particle has energy b then it is represented by mathematical object mb and so on and so forth so we have a mathematical object m for every possible outcome we could get for our particle somehow our particle is represented by a amalgamation of all these mathematical objects holding on to each each outcome until we make a measurement so we need to put all these mathematical objects to get okay to get somehow let's uh, let you some unknown dot operation which may be addition multiplication it's just some unknown way for us to combine our mathematical objects into a aggregate objects that describes our particle before the measurement this is really good start we all, all we also need to somehow codify if i the idea that some outcomes are more likely than others so each mathematical objects also needs to carry carry with its probability of getting that particular outcome we will well the simplest way to do this is just to add a number in front of each mathematical object a number that somehow encodes how likely each possibility is to occur this is encodes probability okay take a look at what we have a linear combinations our particle is some some sum of linear combination of outcomes possibilities which we will assume are represented by some sort of vectors okay our particle is some sort of linear combination of all outcome possibilities which we will assume are represented by some sort of vectors okay okay sort of vectors this may seem like a big leap but hopefully you see how we come to this conclusion the discreteness problem how we represent physical quantities we know that functions own own work we need a mathematical object to allows us to 
we know that function won't work we need a mathematical object the allows that allows us to sometimes extract discrete values this is a little more different but we if we follow our our lead on linear combinations we may guess that may be linear operator matrix represent physical quantities okay so a matrix physical quantity a matrix consists of a discrete set okay discrete set numbers numbers so you see that it is the linear operator matrix on the screen okay so putting it all together we now have a really solid guess into how we want to model quantum mechanics a solid case for a quantum math model particles are represented by represented by a linear combinations of vectors is some vector space that is physical quantities vector space this is the particle particle and this is the particle physical quantities are represented by linear operators within that space so what matters is that you see why linear algebra is a good starting point of quantum mechanics how is particle vectors we will discuss okay so friends i hope i can keep some idea to you that you can understand why we need why we need linear algebra in quantum mechanics and thanks for watching if any problem please comment on my channel